Good morning. I almost hit the uh, end meeting for all this morning. <laughs> Good to see you guys all today. We're on January the 12th of 2018. We're 12 days in, guys. <clears throat> Reading the one year Bible study. Just ever so often, I have somebody private message me and say, Show me what that Bible looks like. Uh, we're doing the New Living Translation this year. Uh, it's on a third grade level. It's real, real, real easy to understand. But I want you all to know <clears throat> in a few places, and I do mean very few places, but there is a few places they leave a few words out, and the translation is not accurate. Um, it's not <clears throat> word for word, but it wasn't meant to be word for word. <clears throat> it's meant to be easy in a language we understand, and that's why I read it uh, early, early in the mornings when I wake up. I started that way back when I worked um, at a job that I may have to get up at three or four o'clock in the morning to get to work, <clears throat> like some of them that's on here still has to do at times. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, we're reading in Genesis chapter 26 and 27, uh, Matthew chapter 9, and <clears throat> I love these stories. This is the story of Isaac and Rebekah and their sons uh, Esau and Jacob. And this morning as I read, you know, this is the story where <clears throat> Rebekah convinces Jacob to go in and to prepare a meal for Isaac, who is in his last days and to garner the blessing from him that's normally uh, reserved for the firstborn. Now, already Jacob had gotten the birthright from Esau because Esau had been out <coughs> uh, um, hunting and came in and was very, very, very hungry, and he was so hungry that, and Jacob was cooking a stew that um, Jacob had said, well, you can have some stew if you give me your birthright, and uh, very carelessly, without thought, without prayer, uh, Esau gave Jacob his birthright. Now here in today's reading, um, <clears throat> Esau are, is doing what his father Isaac had asked him to do. He's gone out hunting to, to prepare a feast to bring in because Isaac is going to give his firstborn son his blessing before he passed. And Rebecca overheard that. Rebecca's the mom. Rebecca overheard that, told Jacob to do that. So they prepared a meal that would be like the one that Esau would have prepared. His mother, Rebecca, <clears throat> took uh, skins of animals and camouflaged Jacob so that Esau, who was dim in sight, the Bible says, would not be able to see who it was. And so that Jacob would get the blessing. And this is what happened. So I just saw new things today. I'm still chewing on what they mean for me today, um, just to be real honest with you. Um, but this, for the first time uh, reading these, I see, I see the wrongdoing clearer of what Rebecca did. I always concentrate on Jacob because Jacob is the one the story goes on and continues on and God's blessing is on and <clears throat> we get lots and lots and lots of uh, um, rich things from Jacob's life. Uh, but Rebecca is the one that thought of the deceit first. Rebecca talked her son into doing it. Now understand, Jacob had to agree with it. He had to do it. He had to carry it out. But Rebecca is the one that planted the seed for deceit. And <clears throat> as I'm reading it and as this story unfolds, uh, we read about Rebecca and she always favored Jacob. Jacob was her favorite um, and she loved him the most. So what did, what did <clears throat> Rebecca's deceit cost her? Well, it cost her the majority of her favorite's adult life because consequently, because Jacob went in, deceived his father, got the blessing, Esau came back to get the blessing, found out that Jacob had lied and had, had stolen the blessing from him, 
Esau set out to destroy was going to kill Jacob. So once again comes back to Rebecca. Rebecca warns Jacob, tells him that Esau is going to kill him, and tells him to leave. And then Esau even flees. Rebecca lives the rest, most of the rest of her life without either one of her sons. Wow, what a price to pay for deceit. Now, <clears throat> today I, I, I feel like God very much is dealing with me and um, touching my heart. Now, remember when our father, when we're his and when our father corrects us, it's not through guilt and condemnation. He doesn't, he does not correct us through guilt and condemnation. He corrects us in love. It's a gentleness. It is a correction, but there's a gentleness to it. So <clears throat> I'm open. I will, if, if there, if indeed, and there may be a correction in this for Elizabeth and Lord, I pray if there be anything in me, that's not of you, that you get that out of me and that you reveal it to me. Um, and I mean that with all my heart. Uh, if indeed there's a correction in here, then it, it's in love, not meant to make me feel guilty, not to make me feel condemned. But through this, Rebecca <clears throat> is, it paid some terrible consequences. Now, Jacob paid terrible consequences, and those consequences continued on. I mean, he even had an encounter with God that he no longer walked normal, if you were, if you can remember back, we haven't got there yet in the reading, this is coming up, but I'm, I'm thinking of the consequences of our bad choices, is, is what I think God has me thinking on today, and that's what I'm speaking on, <clears throat> consequences of our bad choices. Uh, Rebecca didn't get to have either one of her sons, and Jacob had to leave his homeland for a long, long, long time, and Jacob had to, to leave knowing that his brother hated him, knowing what he had done wrong. Both Rebecca and Jacob knew what they'd done wrong. And yet God still turned it for good. And he did. God still tur turned it for good. Um, but it didn't change the consequence. See, our sins are forgiven. Our sins are forgiven before we ever commit them when we're his. And God's mercy is always there for us. He, he's always redemptive towards us. He's always loving towards us. He's always, his love is always available. It's just like me holding this Bible out. It's here. It's here for our taking. And by faith, we take what he's already done for us. And then we allow it to be applied to our life. <clears throat> we submit, we die to ourselves. We die to our own emotions. We die to what we want. We die to our scheduling. We die to being right. We die to we die, a dead man has no rights, and, and, and reach out and grab what's available to us, and then God, through us, continues the process uh, of renewing our minds and, and giving us a new life and making all things new. We get to wake up every single morning to a new batch of mercies. We get to wake up every single morning to a new batch of grace. Every single morning we wake up to a new batch of glory, and that's powerful, but it doesn't change the consequences. There are still consequences. Even after Jacob wrestled with that angel that then messed up his hip that caused him to walk differently, he still walked with a limp. There's consequences to our decisions, uh, consequences to what I do. Um, And then here on, um, I'm just, I'm just thinking, you can just see that I'm thinking. So we're Genesis uh, chapter 27, verse um, 44. Um, this is when uh, Esau is so angry and she's telling Jacob he's going to kill her, kill him. And he has to flee. Uh, this is Rebecca's words to Jacob saying, stay there with him until you're, she had sent him off to another land to be with a family member, sent Jacob off to another land to be with a family member to let Esau cool off. Stay there with him until your brother cools off. When he calms down and forgets what you've done to him, I will send for you to come back. Why should I lose both of you in one day? 
I just this all of a sudden the day that hit me. Why should I lose both of you in one day? In essence, she did lose both of them in one day uh, as a consequence for what she had done. Uh, she lived a long time without both of them. But anyway, um, anyway, that's I just that's what I got today. I love reading these historical stories. In, they're so powerful in our life and. I just enjoy them. Even waking up early in the morning, I enjoy them. We're in Matthew 9, and this is where um, Jesus uh, uh, heals the paralyzed man on the mat, <clears throat> and then, of course, he's getting criticized. And in verse 4, Jesus knew what they were thinking, so he asked them, Why do you have such evil thoughts in your hearts? Why do you have such evil thoughts in your hearts? See, this morning, you know, I uh, I just read these scriptures a few few minutes ago, not very long. I didn't read them two hours ago and reread them and reread them, and not this morning. I I I didn't have time to reread and I didn't have time to study. I read them and I got on a video with you guys, and so I know that God's showing me things. I read this every single day, expecting God to show me something, and today the word consequences came up and. And so I still want to explore that. And, and so as I'm thinking it through, I think out loud anyway, I'm processing it through with you guys as I'm talking about it. <clears throat> and consequences kind of grew a little bit, the concept of it. And I stopped very quickly and bowed my head and said, Lord, if there be anything in me that's not of you, take it out. That was real <clears throat> because here we read, Jesus knew what they were thinking. So he asked them, why do you have such evil thoughts in your hearts? Now notice he didn't say, why do you have such evil thoughts in your brain? He said, why do you have such evil thoughts in your heart? So I asked him this morning to search my heart and see if there be anything in me. And I gave him permission to get it out, to get it out. That's the process we use if it's sincere. It has to be sincere. And I have to be willing to give up whatever this thought is in my heart. But now let's talk about the thoughts that's in my heart. <clears throat> See, God knows what we're thinking before we ever think it. He knows what we're thinking before we ever know we're going to think it. He knows what we're thinking before we ever think it. I mean, God is God. God is God. Why do you have such evil thoughts in your heart? Not in your mind, not in your brain. He comes, Jesus come to make all things new, including our thoughts. My words are determined by my thoughts. My thoughts are determined by my heart. The thoughts start in our heart. If there be any darkness in here, you can bet that that darkness will manifest here into a dark thought, which then will come out as grumbling, as complaining, as lies, as deceit, as manipulation, as white lies, as you name it. You name it. Why do you have such evil thoughts in your heart? It's a heart issue. Our thoughts is a heart issue. If I'm depressed and I can't get over it, it's a heart issue. It's because our mind keeps focusing on what we don't have. You cannot stay depressed and praise God. You cannot stay depressed and be thankful. You cannot stay depressed if you're concentrating on God. It's, a, it's impossible. It's impossible. And, and I can't make myself change my thoughts. I have to acknowledge that there's a need for a change, that I have wrong thinking, and I have to tell God that I'm his and that I, I give up my right to hold on to any thought I have so that he then can do his work and he'll change my heart, which then in turn changes my thoughts so that I never ever have to have another thought again. You know, I went through some uh, postpartum depression after my first son had a, an emergency C-section. I got a thousand excuses. If 
for why I went through it. And because I went through it, I have the utmost empathy and understanding for anybody that suffers from that. Um, I do. It, it's crippling. I mean, all of a sudden, the tiniest little anthill becomes a mountain uh, when you're depressed. And so having experienced that myself, I just didn't know where the cure was. I didn't know where the healing came from. And the healing came from my heart. And through all of that, I focused on what I didn't have. I focused on the fact I had a C-section and not a natural childbirth. I, and and I'm, the list goes on, and I'm not going back there. Um, but you know what? Um, in the last 17 years since I've made that commitment to God that I tried it the way of the world, and I didn't want to do that anymore. I want to do it His way his way, even when the smallest temptation for depression comes, I'm able to, to submit that to him and to let him, let him remove it from me. See, it's not my responsibility. I only have one responsibility, and that is to be his, to be his, to completely give myself. You know, there are actually people out there that who have, who have had depressive thoughts for so long that they wouldn't know how to act if they didn't have them. There's people that have had anxious thoughts for so long that they wouldn't know what their real, the real them is. I, I mean, all of us have it for all, for all. It's all of us, all of us. There's no, no temptation under man that's not known by God. There's, <laughs> There's nothing new under the sun. If I'm guilty of one little thing, I'm guilty of all. James says if I'm guilty of one sin, I'm guilty of all. We just got through reading in Matthew that how can I, how can I pull the speck out of my brother's eye when I got a log in my own? That's telling us. Any, any little speck we see in somebody else, it's even greater inside of us. So I say that as I'm speaking. I have not walked down the path that all of you have walked. You've not walked down the path I've walked. I acknowledge that. There are no two paths exactly alike. What I have walked through, when I find somebody similar, it's sim simply a similar walk, not the same walk. Nobody has ever walked in our shoes. Nobody's ever walked in your shoes. But I do know where the answer lies for every issue. B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. But there are so, so many of people who, who suffer the same way I have suffered and probably the same way in some areas I still suffer because I'm still on this journey with the Lord. I, I haven't arrived. I haven't arrived yet. That we are so comfortable. And I'll give you an example from me. I wasn't raised with money. I, I wasn't raised with means. I, I, I grew up most of the time pretty poor is, is if you just look at financial means. I, in fact, I grew up very poor um, if you're just looking at financial things. So as a little girl growing up that way, <clears throat> um, certain mindsets start my, I, on the external. The external things are teaching my brain to think a certain way. And so Growing up then, I had this poverty mentality. And, and what happened is, is that I'm so comfortable in that poverty mentality. I mean, seriously, Brooke's on here, David's on here, the folks that work with me are here, and, and they watch me in this house, and you know they'll walk out of a room, and I go up behind them, and I shut the light off. And <laughs> I mean, right now today, if you look, I've got lights off in this house. Now, there's a part of that that's balanced. And there's a part of that that why should I waste electricity? But, but, but what I've struggled with is there's a big part of me that it's a poverty mentality of, oh my gosh, what if I can't pay the electric bill? That's never left me. And see, I get so comfortable in that and I make such a ritual of that. Oh, flip the light off, flip the light off. And I'm just using this as an example. Flip the light off, flip the light off. That if I stop flipping the light off, I don't know what to do with my hands. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm being dramatic, and I'm using myself 
as an example, but it's a true example. In the last two years, I cannot begin to tell you how God Almighty has delivered me out of a poverty mentality to the point that I can actually believe that God wants to prosper me. He wants to bless me, that he truly did open the treasures of heaven to me when I accepted his son. The list goes on. There are more prosperity messages in here than you can shake a stick at. Let me tell you, Jesus talked about money almost more than any other topic that he talked about in red letters. Check it out and see. <clears throat> but, but we get so comfortable in the wrong mindsets. Oh, well, you know what? My grandma had diabetes. My mom had diabetes. So guess what? I'm going to have diabetes. We get so comfortable in those mindsets that we don't, we don't, we, we, we couldn't accept deliverance even if it was offered to us. And, and that's why we have to constantly, constantly through our relationship, through love, not guilt, not condemnation, constantly have to let God have us. And, I, and I, I've shared with you guys, and I mean this with everything. It's very close to me. It's very intimate. It's not easy for me to say these kind of things on a video that's going out to all over the country. <clears throat> so many times I tell my Lord when I sense something in me. I sit, he, he said to him, <clears throat> what were you thinking? Why? No, no, no. Jesus knew what they were thinking. So he asked them, why do you have such evil thoughts in your heart? When I sense that, when I sense that, that's when I say, Father, get it out of me, even if it physically kills me. I'm telling him that he has permission to kill me if that's what it takes to get the darkness out. Now, I can say that in the confidence of knowing that he wants me to live a long, full life. The Proverbs that we're reading right now along in our daily Bible study says it over and over and over again that if we live by the laws of God, that we will live a long, prosperous, healthy life. I don't have to fear death. I mean, the worst case scenario is, is that I die and I'm with Jesus? Really? What's to fear in that? But, but please hear my heart. You have to tell God, I don't even know where I have wrong thoughts, Father. Change me from the inside out. Get out of my mind and into my heart, Lord, and change me where all of my thoughts will be renewed for you and let it all be for your glory. Not so I get a new car. Not so that I can do this. Not so that I can show so-and-so I was right. Not so, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Just so that I can give you glory and I can have this oneness with you, Father. Wow. Okay, so I didn't have a clue that was going there. <laughs> but, but it's so true. He's had to show me the areas that I've had such wrong thinking. I had religious training that was wrong. Was there intense wrong? I don't think so. I don't think they intended to teach me wrong. I think they intended to help me. I think they taught me from the level of understanding they had at the time. Um, but... I had such intense religious training that I had a hard time letting go of it because my comfort was found in the religious rites, in the religious rituals, in the religious mindset of the training I had since birth that, that the freedom that I truly experienced felt like I'd free fall. Uh, it, we, we have wrong thoughts. I still have wrong thoughts and I'm asking my father, to pull them out of me one at a time, renew my mind, renew my heart so that my mind will be renewed so that I'll have the right words to speak every single day. And he's really working on me. He's never stopped working on me about the words that come out of my mouth. So anyway, with that, you guys have a wonderful weekend and stay warm.